everybody. Welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt Weber, and I'm joined by Martin Burke. How are you doing this week, Martin? Hi, Matt. Doing well. How are things for you? And what have you been up to? Uh, I have been having a very successful couple weeks with Linux. Now, uh, I think we talked Sounds about this. promising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I talked about this before when um, you first started on the show. That I'd never been successful actually in getting anything in Wine to work. Like always was trying to get you know a game to start in Wine and could never get it to work. Well this time, I decided to try it again with Lutris, and I got it to work. So I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone, which is a game that I used to play all the time when I was on you know um, like an iPad or something uh, or Windows. So that's been a lot of fun. It was astonishingly easy. <laughs> It's just, it was almost like install, installing it on Windows. It, uh, it just, you know, a wizard or whatever comes up and says install these fonts and install the thing and bada bing bada boom. It was really good. Um, yeah. I, I also, I was having problems getting VirtualBox installed on the on this on Manjaro. I got that fixed this week too. So it was a, it was a good week in Linux. Uh, how about you, Martin? What'd you do this week in Linux? Right, not too bad myself. Um, I bought myself a, one of those little mini PCs. I'd like to say it was a top of the range nook, but sadly no. <laughs> it's from a company called Ace PC. So the specs are Windows 10 Pro, which obviously got replaced. 8 gigabyte DDR4, 128 gigabyte ROM. Uh, it's just an Intel Celeron processor. Um, Wi Fi, Bluetooth. Supports VGA, two HDMI ports, so on paper anyway, it can handle a triple display. I've only used it on a double display. Uh, two USB 3, uh, two USB 2. Uh, Besser on the back, so I can mount on the back of my um, monitors or a wall if needed. Well, I've, I've only bought it for home working, just to save a little on running costs, just to save powering up a, a PC, but that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'll probably I'll probably just turn it into um, some sort of emulation me uh, machine later on. But yeah, it's a nice little tidy bit of kit and, and it wasn't astronomical so it, it'll get me through the day at work. So yeah, yeah, it's cool. Nice little, uh, toy cool. to play with. Yeah, it's all right. All right, so let's jump into so, the contact information. Uh if you want to contact us, you can do so at the Linux Cast on Twitter. I'm at MTWB Martin's Martin Twit to you. You can find all these links in the show notes or the video description. You can subscribe to us, uh, all of our feeds and stuff at the LinuxCast.org, and contact us via email at contact at the or uh, excuse me, the LinuxCast at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook at facebookcom slash linuxcast and you can also subscribe to us on YouTube at youtubecom linuxcast. We got our our url yeah <laughs> it was cool because it surpassed 100 followers 100 subscribers a couple weeks ago and right 170 subscribers now before you know pewdiepie here we come that's what well, i'm that's saying it, Mike. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's so each it. and every week we martin and i um choose a news link mine's a couple of weeks old but i think it's still fairly relevant um so martin why don't you give us your news link first Yep, uh, so 10-year-old pseudo bug lets Linux, uh, lets Linux users gain root level access. I don't know whether you'd spotted this or you just get them to auto-update, but I, I did notice um, an, an update um, to sudo the other week, and I thought, it's a bit strange, what's happening there? Um, so anyway, uh, the bug, which is known as Baron Samedit, can be exploited by an attacker who's gained local access to a p- PC in order to escalate privileges. Um, the bug was introduced in the pseudo code back in July 2011, effectively impacting all pseudo versions released over the last 10 years. I think it was um, a, a security company found this. I mean, Yeah, I think so too. After 10 years, you just thought, it, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Uh, obviously, you've got to be in this essentially the same room there's, there's no remote access in well it's like to... that 
It's like that um, screensaver bug that's been in, you know, screensavers or whatever forever. That was just was like rediscovered a couple of weeks ago by the kid just banging on yeah. the keyboard. Yeah. So I mean, it's, kind of, it's probably kind of like that. Yeah, it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's just there you go. It is what it is, and and, and there you go. How about yourself? What, what uh, news? Uh, what's, is it news? It's a couple of weeks. A week so, or so um, old. MX Linux, which appears to be the uh, brand new king of DistroWatch, because um, it's uh, been on this top of DistroWatch for quite a long time. I'm going to actually make a video about it here in a couple of days. Um, but yeah, MX yeah. Linux has uh, come out with a uh, an ISO for the Raspberry Pi, uh, and it, I think it just kind of goes to show that more and more um, distros are being developed. To Co on uh, both like the normal platforms and the uh, ARM platform stuff that for the Raspberry Pi. Like we, now we have obviously Ubuntu is on there, like standard actual Ubuntu, not just ser- Ubuntu server. We have uh, Debian, which is Raspbian, right? And then um, now we have MX Linux. And I think there's a Manjaro spin and an Arch spin. So yeah. we have more and more mainline distros coming out for support for the Raspberry Pi. So um, I really got to get me one of these little computers because they are, you know, kind of awesome. I really want to build a NAS with one. I'm really thinking about it. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, it, it escaped me this. I mean, I'd, I'd started on it, MX Linux, essentially. And um, it does what it says on the tin, really. But, yeah, um, just reading through it now. Um, yep, uses Fluxbox. Nice and easy, low power. Yeah, I might well give this a spin the weekend. Um have a check through it, but yeah, I quite enjoy MX Linux. It, it, it's just I've got to download that, it. I'm that gonna, bit, because I'm going to put it in a hop it in a virtual machine and see what see what all the hype is about. Because for some reason, it's been at the top of DistroWatch for I don't know months and months. Yeah, my only quirk with it when I first installed it is it um, you haven't got the bottom browser. You got the the browser on the left hand side going up. Which a bit is a bit of a quirk, and then once you get it set up the way you like it, um, that that was the only thing I had with it. Other than that, it, it literally worked as your your other favourite uh, Linux Mint. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's right. it's an, a Debian based distro, so I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, um, the only, only thing it'll be won't be like Ubuntu where it'd be, um, snap shoved down your throat. Mm. Uh, I guess I'm gonna give it a try. I don't mind. I've never minded the apt package manager, but it was it was always the PPA crap that bothered me. Mainly because mm-hmm. once you, once I used the AUR, obviously I uh, never wanted to leave. All right, so our main topic this week was Martin firewalls and security. Now I have no clue what we're going to be talking about because there's no notes here. So what, what are we talking about this week, Martin? Right, so firewalls and security, as you say. Um, first off, just to say that I'm definitely not a security expert, but as Linux users, security is quite high on our agendas. Um, I mean, whilst on Windows, it, it, it was literally shoved down your throat to use firewall, use virus protection, which at the end of the day, I, I just frequently turned it off due to eating up my system resources, especially when playing a decent game. I mean... Do you actually use Firewall? I installed the Firewall on Argo when I was on that. Uh, when I had Argo installed for that long period of time, I did actually do the whatever the simple Firewall or whatever. It's the one that this yeah. YouTube covered, and I actually did it the day he did that video, and I left it on there, and just it was, you know it was fine. Um, I have not reinstalled it since on Manjaro, but. Um, I'm still hedging on the fact that I'm pretty sure that Manjaro will eventually will stop working for me. So <laughs> there's a lot of things I've just kind of put off because I know eventually I'm going to have to go back to Arco or uh, some other Arch-based distro. But eventually, yeah, I'll probably put a... I've never been... I, I don't know why, but I... especially when it's so easy to install a firewall, um, I've just never been all that, you know seen the need to do it i don't know i mean I, I, it's really lacks yeah, of security yeah. for me but it's just you know it's just the way i've kind of always felt i mean my thoughts exactly i mean as a windows user yeah i always used to 
listen and yeah whatever download these big programs having running running eating up and stuff like that but i mean <laughs> let's be honest as a typical home user i mean i myself personally don't think it's necessary for it um but um although thankfully the, the kernel does have a, a a utility program um baked into it called um, ip tables um which contains shells of chains of rules and how for how to how it will treat network traffic and it can be run by your favorite the command line using a package called which was on about earlier uncomplicated firewall now it, it, it it's super easy to get it up and running and i mean i i I use my way, which is a G U F W, which is obviously the graphical way. Oh, I mean, come um, on, man, you're, you're, you're losing your no, Linux card. You got to lose the command line. No, I'm quite <laughs> happy to to um, click, click, oh, turn on, yep, turn off. <laughs> there you go. I'm quite happy instead of opening up a turn up terminal, sticking my commands. But yeah, it's super duper easy, whichever way you want to do it. And th- there's your added bit of security especially i mean obviously if you're remoting in or, or things like that or you've got your nas and you just want that extra bit of security but i mean i've stuck it on and obviously it doesn't eat up anything really so i mean that's what i it. find the most interesting actually isn't the ones that you can install on your computer but one that you run through like a raspberry pi because like if you've got something like a something that could be network wide just Pop a Pi on your network, and all your network traffic goes through the Pi, running this whatever, and then you just have a firewall for everyone that's in your house. That'd be that yeah, make well, a lot more sense to me. Plus, you could do something yeah. like um that network wide ad blocker or whatever. You could install the same thing on the same Pi or whatever, and get them both to work together. That'd be uh, that sounds like a good project for me because uh. Th- then I can say that I'm secure, and I don't. Every time I hop distros, I don't have to remember to install the uncomplicated firewall. It's just yeah. on Pi somewhere running for ever and ever. Yeah, I thought about it myself. Set up um, a Pi hole, um, but I mean, you're gonna lose, especially if you've got your Wi-Fi. I mean, you've got the added benefits of your ads are blocked. It's using different DNSs, things like that. Uh, you've got your firewall set up. But I mean. I don't know about yourself, but I've got in my family of four, we've got to have about eight wireless devices. And if you're running that through the Pi, essentially the Pi's filtering it all out. Um, I think it would um, grain on your, your network speed somehow. I um, if well, you could so, do somewhat. Like a. a... Like a per channel, like get your own little like w- Wi-Fi router out of pies. Like so, you'd have your own. Yeah. You'd have a Wi-Fi yeah. router, but maybe one per device. It's not like you're moving past the hundred dollar ri- Raspberry Pi into spending thousands of dollars on pies and different routers or whatever. But yeah, it ha- there has to be some kind of yeah. um, solution for that. I suppose it would be just to share the load, but uh, but what I've looked into anyway, I, I think it does degrade on your. Um, Mm. your connectivity because you've got that many things flying here there and everywhere it's not going to keep up but I, yeah I, 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 we're I, in 2020 why the hell don't uh wireless routers have firewalls built in i mean it's just, it's you can different. buy them yeah I, yeah i'm sure you can buy them i, I think it's mainly we, we, we're talking to do with ads and stuff like this and and tracking you and, and things like that that they, they still want to um, track you but yeah I'll, I'm on, all, on board with you I mean it should just be there but the thing is everyone would be buying these and having no ads and things like this and it would just grind to a halt I mean I know yeah you can use your ad blockers and things like that but yeah it, it's one of those things but yeah I'm, I'm sure you can get the um Sure, over in America, you can get some open source routers um, and get the software set up on that and get it all tweaked, ex- running how you, you like it. Um, obviously, keeping you safe online and, and mm. helping blocking all the horrendous ads. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, 
In terms of security, um, I mean, s strong passwords is a must. <laughs> Don't use silly things like Elvis, let me in, or password <laughs> as you log in. I mean, the main problem is if you, your website that you're on gets compromised, whether it's your it's got your passwords that they'll just link it and just keep brute forcing different web services in the hopes that you are using let me in as your main facebook password or straight the way across i mean i know some i mean i could put my hand up and i, and I did use the use the same password for a while years ago till i realized it ex I think, exactly I think everybody that, does that when they first start out on the internet I mean, yeah I you like get it. your well, especially at work, you just knock it up a number or change a letter or add a question mark or something mm -hmm. like that to it. But yeah, I think, um, and again, password managers, I think, is a must because I mean, it can create a, a massive string that uh, that's going to take some brute force in bloody years to work out. I mean, have you looked into any password managers recently? I I've switched from. Uh... Last year sometime, probably towards the beginning of the year, I switched from using NPass to uh, Bitwarden uh, because it's an open source one. Uh, prior yeah. to that, I used LastPass. Um, and I still have data in LastPass, uh, but I think I've got most of it out now. And, and I set my mom up with LastPass. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I, when... use, I use Bitwarden as my main one. Yeah, I went the other way. I went from LastPass... Onto Bitwarden, and I, I, I just didn't, I just didn't like Bitwarden. To be fair, I don't know I'm gonna get shouted down. But LastPass, nice and easy. You've got your no log into your web page. It's there. You don't have to right click, yeah. select a password. It, it, it's just automatically filled in, and you're auto logging. It, it's just nice and easy. And yeah, I had any I guess, problems with LastPass. I just wanted something that was open source. Was yeah, yeah. I mean, I put. Yeah, I purchased a bit more than a premium and stuff like that. I used it for about a weekend, and I, I just went back to LastPass. It's just what you feel comfortable with at the end. I mean, mm -hmm. they're both free, essentially. Um, in terms of security, uh, what I've done recently is I've bought myself one of those YubiKeys. So it's just a, a, literally a small USB device. You just pop it into your computer and there's like a little gold disc on it. And you just literally tap the gold disc and that's for your two-factor authentication. So if I need to go into Dropbox or Google or things like that, it'll come up, please insert your key. Just pop that in and press that in just for that added benefit, especially on my Gmail because I don't know about you, but I've got a lot on G. Uh, well, not on Google services with my, obviously, email that I don't particularly use, but I do use the photos and the documents and things like that. So I think um, a YubiKey is um, up there just as second pass. And I got sick of using the various authenticators that you, you've still got to have your phone. And I mean, you're knackered as well. If you do lose your YubiKey like I did the other day, I couldn't find it for love and worry. So it, it might be best if you're a bit complacent like me, he's buying two. But I would recommend then those just for that added bit of security. So even if they do get in your account, they've got to have the two factor on it, um, which I believe uh, Bitwarden uh, supports and LastPass mm -hmm. as two factor authentication, which are, are definitely make them rock rock tight especially last pass because it literally is you stick in your password don't you last pass and you're in um so yeah i definitely re recommend uh, a yubikey or, or something very similar obviously with security we've, we've all got our various different types of ad blockers just and things like that just to keep some of the the untrusted sites away and obviously we nobody clicks on that we've won an I a brand new iPad, congratulations, things like that. I think that's gone a bit old now. Um, and obviously the, the, my, the other bane of my existence is YouTubers ramming down your neck the use of VPNs to protect your blooming security and things like that. It just makes me want to turn them off. 
I mean, I know they've got to earn their crust, but at the end of the day, a, a VPN is if you're outside of the home and you're connecting to unsecured networks, things like that. I mean, I have got one. I mean, and it can be useful, especially if you want to uh, do a region change to watch Netflix on a different country, things like that. But that's that's mainly what I use it for. I mean, I've got it on my phone if I ever do run out of um, wireless minutes, but at 10 gig, it, it's going to be a cold day in hell when I do that. Um, have you got anything to add on security? Any tips? Uh, well, I, I agree with the uh, YubiKey. The problem is I've never used one, so um, I'm probably going to have to actually learn how to do it. Um, maybe I'll buy one of those eventually. Uh, I do use a VPN, but not necessarily for security. Um, hmm. I, I just want it for when I, you know... Uh, want to watch something that comes from across the pond, you know, and they won't let me because I'm, you know, I'm American or, you know, whatever, you know, that's really the only reason why I, you know, um, we have a VPN. Um, I, it's a good idea to have a VPN if you're like, maybe like in during normal times and you were at like a coffee shop or something and you wanted to yeah, gotcha. you know, protect your information off of an open hotspot or whatever. Um, but I mean, in this day and age, I mean, everybody's at home. Um, and, and unless <laughs> you're downloading a lot of uh, like uh, like torrents or whatever, I guess. I mean, even even if you're using torrents the legal way, just like downloading like uh, Linux Strays, I, yeah. ISOs, you probably should use a VPN because a lot of I, ISPs will see that you're downloading uh, torrents or whatever and just assume. That you're downloading, you know, the latest blockbuster hits, uh, when <laughs> really what you're doing is downloading Arch Linux. Um, so a, a VPN in that situation would probably be a good idea, but it's that has less to do with security and more about, um, you know, the 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 man's uh, paranoia about you stealing everything on the internet. Yeah, I guess. But... Yeah. Definitely, but yeah, I very rarely use my VPN. It's just there. It's thirty-five quid a year, and it and it's there on my phone if I if I do need to connect. And as you say, region lock content. God yeah. knows why it's a thing in this day and age. At the end of the day, you could just do a Google search and get whatever you want anyway. So just open up Netflix worldwide. Give everyone the choice. And yeah, Prime, something. I think Prime, Amazon Prime do the same, I think. Um, oh, I'm sure, yeah. But yeah, it, each to their own, and they need the subscribers to get it, but at the end of the day, um, more choices, more viewers. I up. thought about subscribing to uh, the new Firefox VPN, not just necessarily because I think it's going to be good or because I necessarily trust it, but just because, it, you know, to support Firefox a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I'll probably just stick with uh, Express B VPN, which is what I've been using. Because it's just, like you say, it's just something that, you know, charges you every couple of years, and it's just in the background, and you use it when you, you know, absolutely have to. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I see a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, we've got to uh, help support Firefox. But, I mean, they, they get a wadge of cash on Google. <laughs> yeah. Well, An I mean, absolute wadge of catch. From the Google. idea, hopefully, is that <laughs> eventually they won't have to have that support from Google. But I don't know. The I mean, the I think we talked about this last time. How the Mozilla stuff is really, you know, the the, the CEO and the all the executives are seem very um, attached to that Google money because it pays them all of their salaries. Salaries. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's completely off topic, but. It's a mess. We need some good open source browsers. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, all right. are you still using Cute Browser? Are you still on that? I have it still installed. So I just, so I made a video about this, but if there, if it wasn't for the stupid YouTube interstitial ads, the ones that they interrupt the videos for, if I could get rid of those, I'd use Cute Browser as my daily driver. It's really, yeah. really good. And especially like, because I use Google Docs for a lot of stuff. I mean, I know, I know. Google bad, um, yeah. but I mean I use Google Docs for a lot of stuff for for work for keeping track of all of this all this other stuff, and yeah. I love Vim key bindings in every place that I can have them, 
And you can't use Vim key bindings in, in like Firefox or Chrome. I mean, you can. There are Vim plugins for, but they don't work in uh, Google Docs. But if you use Cute Browser, they work. So uh, that's the one reason why I still have it installed on my system because I can use Google Docs with the, with the Vim bindings. Uh, and with the hope that eventually the ad blocking in Cute Browser will get better. Supposedly, I, I got a comment on, on YouTube that the, the the most recent Git version has better ad blocking and supposedly will block those YouTube ads, which is a, a big thing. Because YouTube ads, I mean, I know I'm trying to be YouTube Mar YouTuber Martin, but uh, I think we, everybody can agree, even like the people who make millions of dollars on YouTube, that the... YouTube ads are terrible. I mean, they're just so bad. I mean, I mean watch watch an eight-minute video get interrupted six times by an advertisement. That, I mean, no. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, gone are the days where you just get one ad. I mean, there was a time when you just get the one ad. Yeah, at the beginning. At the start of YouTube, which is fine, no problem, no biggie. Yeah, then you get I, two I or three. Yeah, show them all to me at the beginning. I don't care. I mean, I'd love the opportunity to skip them if they're crappy ads, but I mean, I, like, I want to support. Exp I mean, some YouTubers I could give a rat's ass if I support them. You know, like I, like I don't. If, if you have a billion subscribers, if I'm, I don't want. I don't care about supporting Taylor Swift or whatever on YouTube. But I mean, there's a lot of YouTubers that I would, you know, sure I'll watch your ads because I'd like to, you know, DistroTube or you know whatever. Um, but I don't want to watch the stuff. In the middle, it's dumb. I mean, it's so stupid. I don't like who, who thought this was a good idea. I mean, TiVo has spent a decade trying to get it so that you can skip ads on TV, and we brought it to the internet. <laughs> like, oh, this was a good idea for the last 50 years. Let's do it on the internet. And like, no, that's dumb. Google, you're idiots. You wouldn't um, mind if there was relevant ads to you, would you? It's like when you get the TikTok ads, you just feel like punching your small screen it's like oh my yeah. god just so done. I, thankfully I've, I've just upgraded to um, premium and it's job done then and it's just made my life just I can actually sit down and watch what I want to watch um, without yeah. being interrupted and share it out between the family and it, and it's worth its weight in gold to be fair because at the end of the day we're moving forward and I, I do watch more YouTube than I do TV that's that goes yeah I think everybody does uh, see my thing is I have all of my music playlists on Spotify it, and, and I know that there's hacky ways of getting your music over to YouTube yeah. music um, but they're not great and and I, I've I've tried YouTube Music, the the app, and the app is kind of god awful on Android. So I don't know, maybe it's changed because I haven't used it in well over a year. So maybe I'll give it a try because I mean, the the thing is, if you're gonna pay for YouTube Premium, you also are probably gonna pay for the the music because they're kind of like bundled together, right? Yeah, um, yeah, they're sh they're it's a shared service. I'd never used YouTube Music before. Um, I always uh, stuck to Spotify. I mean, you can't mess with Spotify recommendations. Um, YouTube's got a bit of work to do and things like that, but well, I, I don't yeah, want to be I don't want to be attached to using because I, I mean I like I, I listen to music all the time like everybody does and I don't want to have to listen to my music in a browser tab like I want an application on my desktop and Spotify is the only one that seems to have a a, a, a good app on Spotify and they also have an API which allows for like a, a I know I know a command line uh, application <laughs> that will allow me to listen to Spotify and uh, <laughs> so I mean I know I know I'm a nerd I can't help it all right all right we've gone long, long enough let's talk about our apps of the week Martin your app of the week what is this thing right let me just okay I'll so do. no surprise surprise it's G G G U F W firewall one of the easiest firewalls in the world basically uh a GUI, you get your mouse, click status on, <laughs> and you've got various rules to set up. And obviously, as I said earlier, there is a command line version if you'd like to do it the long way, but once you get used to it, it's the even better quicker, way, you no mean, doubt. Saying, right? the, the better <laughs> way. So, yeah, that, that's mine, just on the topic of it. it it's, like say, it just runs in the background, leave it running. It's not going to do any harm. End of. 
so I'm using that currently which is um, it's with Ubuntu it's on Mint anyway but uh, you, you can download it and it's in the AUR that um, massive unmonitored uh, software library library so yeah you can literally take, get take, it anywhere take take, uh, take that back <laughs> <laughs> it's, AUR, it is. All hail the the AUR screw snaps. I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> all right. Um. All right. So I have two. I'm breaking the rules. I don't care. Um. <gasps> I know. So I've been on a quest to find a good f- uh, file manager. I know it's it's a it's a nerdy quest. I can't help it. Um. And. I'm gonna, here's the, the 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 thing. So I've decided that Nemo is the best file manager, and this comes from I believe I might be wrong about this. Linux Mint, I believe. It, this yep. is it's the Cinnamon version file file manager. Um, and the reason why I needed a, a one of new file managers is because I wanted a file manager that had a dual panes, so I could put two panes side by side and transfer stuff between them. Um. And, and I'd been using Thunar for ages, which is the XFCE version. Uh, and soon after I made a video saying that uh, there was no good dual pane file managers, I had a flood of comments come in on YouTube uh, saying, that, oh, Nemo actually has this. And it does, ha- it did have this. And a few days after that, Thunar actually added this feature. So I haven't actually used that yet. But um, yeah, Nemo is awesome. It's very fast. It's. Um, and it gives me everything I want. So the other one that I, I want to talk about, I don't know if I, I, I've made videos on this. I've talked about this on the podcast before. The Bluetooth on Linux is kind of terrible. And I, Martin, you and I have talked about how Bluetooth is bad. Um, <laughs> and uh, there is an application called Blue Man Manager. It goes with the Blue Utilities and Blueberry, I believe. Um, for sure, the Blue the Blue Utility Blues Utilities. Um, and this is a GUI application, so make Martin happy. Uh, and it <laughs> basically just allows you to deal with all your Bluetooth stuff, and it actually works. Um, now it's not perfect because um, I have a set of Bluetooth headphones, and they're set to automatically pair to my Linux computer. And I actually have to disconnect them and reconnect them manually in this program in order to get to work. But that has nothing to do with the, the utility itself. It's just that Bluetooth on Linux is terrible. So. Um, yeah, it, it's way easier to deal with this than it is to either do it on the command line, which is which was the way I was doing it. Um, I know I'm. <laughs> I, I just said doing it on the command line was bad, but in this case it was it was bad. Um, and, or using a uh, like your your system settings through like XFCE or you know, Cinnamon or whatever you're using. Uh, Blue Man seems to do better because it's literally just doing Bluetooth. That's all it does. I was going to actually, I did see um, a little USB that I thought maybe I should send that to you because, I mean, obviously Bluetooth came out for like sending uh, small files over small distances and it wasn't quite able to um, handle the um, audio side. But this this little, um, I think it's about 20 bucks, something like that, that actually handles um, audio. Which may well, but I mean, if this little um, program sorted your audio out, that's fine. Um, in regards to your, uh, did you try? Min- I'm, I'm sure you did. Midnight Commander. I did, but uh, that's a um, a uh, should... command line utility. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you can't drag and drop from a command line utility. <laughs> you uh, can't yeah, do it. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's really what I want. Uh, like I use for my command line file manager i use ranger i love it it's fantastic but you can't you can't drag and drop out of it or drag and drop between it you have to use you know i mean it's just kind of a kind of a siloed thing um unfortunately i mean if, if there was a way to drag and drop from ranger or midnight commander even uh i'd use it in a heartbeat now there is a gooey version of midnight commander it's called double commander and it is the most complicated piece of software I've ever seen in my life. Now, I, I and that is having used Blender. <laughs> I mean, this is for a file manager. The settings, the settings pane is like I don't know, three miles long. It's it's not that it's oh. bad and it works fine. It's just 
one of those things that have so many settings. And, and you know, I'm the kind of guy who likes a lot of settings, but it, it was kind of like a disorganized mess. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I'd used that before, and it, it was quite busy. I mean, uh, Nemo's nice and easy. I mean, they might restrict it, but it's just a, a right-click open as root. Boom, there you go. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. I, I think, um, depending what package you use, I mean, a lot of different um, restrict it. I know, like KDE, uh, it was a pain. Um, I couldn't, I had to um, get a special command to stick in so I could use the um, open as root privileges on that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nice and easy, right click open as root, job done. See, excellent. I'm, I'm positive that Dolphin has every feature that I'd want to have. But the problem is I don't have KDE on my system right now, and I'm loath to download one KDE app and have to download every single the, KDE the dependency. Yeah, it's a problem. Um, like, I, like I, I jumped from Arco to Manjaro just simply because I wanted to not have 3,000 packages on my system, and I'm already crouching back up to 2,000 packages, which is, which is just absolutely nuts. Because I know a lot of people have like, oh, I have like, oh, I have like 700 packages on my system. I'm like, well, good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Excellent. All right, I want to see how many I have right now, just real quick. I have 1,475 packages on my system right now. So um, when I when I left uh, Arco, I was over 3,000. So I cut down by half, which is good. And I've been trying to do a better job of when I install something like to try to immediately get rid of it when I don't use it. So like when I downloaded Double Commander and the Sunflower File Manager, when I was done with those, I got rid of them. Instead of just yeah. leaving them on my system to, you know, be there forever and ever and ever. Yeah, I've got 20, uh, 2,761 packages oh, and 17 flat packs uh, yeah i i um <laughs> if, if no i were snaps. to use a package manager like that i'd use i'd use flat packs too because uh snap puts that stupid folder in your home directory and i it'll be a cold day, day in hell before i use snaps anyways all right we're, we've gone a little long it's okay actually we actually we're right on time well, i don't know what to talk about anyways if uh all the contact information there was there at the beginning. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and podcasts, or, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We're on uh, po- Overcast and all these different uh, uh, podcast catcher things that you can subscribe to us all the time. We do a podcast every week that we can. Uh, we publish videos on YouTube every single day. And uh, we're awesome, so definitely subscribe. Uh, our next topic is... Um, Oh, oh, this this should get Mr. Martin fired up. Does Linux Mint have a purpose? We're going to talk oh, about this. I mean, yeah. Well, this be a good one. Are you, are you going to try Linux Mint for a whole week? Fuck no. So you can come over to the green <laughs> I, side. I, I'm definitely going to have to beep that part out, but no, hell no. <laughs> uh, I, I'll put it in a virtual machine. And that's where the recording ends for some reason, but we pretty much got the whole episode in. Thank you for listening. If you were remember to subscribe and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure I said that in the original recording, but I can't really remember. Um, and we can all send thanks to the Skype gods who decides to just crash in the middle of a podcast episode. Thanks for listening. Uh, see you next time. <laughs>